Hey, it's Chris, and in this video, we are gonna look at the Wahoo RPM speed and cadence sensors. Now, in this case, I've got the speed sensor right here. The cadence sensor is already on my bike, and I'll show you a close-up of that, but I moved my old speed sensor onto my new bike, but my new bike has a power meter and therefore does cadence, so I don't need to, don't need to move the cadence. So this one's still got a cadence, sensor on it, but we'll unbox the speed sensor, we'll get it on the bike, I'll show you the cadence sensor, and I'll talk about some of the pros and cons. So the nice thing about the Wahoos is there's no, there's no magnets to line up, you literally just stick them on the wheel and they work, and also they're dual band, so they're both Bluetooth and AMP Plus, which is great. So that means that you can connect it to your computer to do some Zwifting on. It also means that it will just be read straight away by your watch. So in the box, if I can get the box open, does it want to come out the bottom instead? The answer is no. I will just pull it out. So we've got some instructions, we've got our casing and the sensor itself, there we go, which I've just dropped on the floor, is here. So you get the little sensor and you get the casing to stick it on as well. So let's cut to some close-ups and show you what's going on here. So right here I have my cadence sensor which is just zip tied onto the crank arm. And it is so covered in mud. It does say, it does say Wahoo under there. The new one, which is the speed sensor, here's the sensor itself. And then we've got this little casing and this rubber stopper, which goes around. So, stick that down there. So the speed sensor goes into there and then you push this onto the back here get it on yep there we go that's in now and then that wraps around your wheel and that fastens into there so let's grab the wheel out the bike and do that now Let's hope I can do this without too much embarrassment. My new bike is a through axle. That's my excuse as to why I can't use a quick release anymore. Boom, we're out. So once you've got your wheel, it goes into the hub. And one of the difficulties with these is that it's really difficult to wrap it around the hub. So one of the things I recommend you do, if you can't get it in instantly, is just give this little rubber some stretching and stretch it out a bit before you try and put it on. And when trying to put it on, I would make the... Uh, I would put the gears away from you. So make sure the cassette faces as far away as possible and go in through your the other side, the brake disc side. And I should have thought through how I was gonna do this because I can't do it on the floor because you won't be able to see. But you just mount it on and pull the rubber straps round. And it, it is honestly super difficult to do. In fact, let's cut to another close-up where you can see me doing this on the floor. Oh. 
might be hidden behind the cassette, so I'm not sure you're actually going to get a better view. But I'm going to pull this out and give it even more of a stretch. Now, I would cut this bit out, but I think, um, you know, if you just read Wahoo's marketing, it says, oh, it's just super easy. Uh, I really want to show you just how uh, how not easy it is to get these fuckers on. I am not getting anywhere here. Nope. Yes, so I've got one on, so I pushed it like that with my fingers while using my other hand to hold it, and I've got one of them looped on. So now I just need to get the other one looped on. So there's, there's like two clips, it's like a bra. So if you've had a lot of experience unhooking them, this is going to serve you well. Oh my god, it's so hard to get through the spokes here. Let's try moving it around slightly and see if that makes it easier to get in. Yes! So there we go. That is now in and clipped on. And... As you can see, that was a massive pain to do, but literally, like, I did it in front of you. I showed you all the struggles, and it was like two minutes, right? Which is a pain in the ass, but two minutes, and that's in there now. We we'll need to take that off until I need to change the battery, and I've, I've had the batteries in my speed sensor for... Ooh, a good eight months now, and they're not even low. There's still loads in there. Just check that's seated correctly. And literally all you do now is stick this wheel back in, and that's it. You are done. You should start getting speed sensor readings. Now, in terms of what's... So that's what's good about them. What's, the only thing that annoys me is... A couple of things so one if you're going to use it on Zwift then I found a real delay between me putting the power down because it's virtual power and actually appearing on the screen sometimes it would be three seconds sometimes it would be five seven ten is the highest I saw and you never knew what when you were doing a ride how long it would be so that was really frustrating especially in a group ride if I was falling off the back or shooting out the front and it was 10 seconds before I could do change my power. That was really frustrating. But that might also just be a connectivity problem, a problem with Zwift. My power meter reads a lot quicker, but you would expect virtual power to be a bit slower. So I don't know if that was a problem with the speed sensor or not. Certainly when I've tried it out in the wild, it has been quicker, but it's still been a second or two behind what's going on in terms of when I put the power down, when I accelerate, then my speed updates a couple of seconds later on my head unit. The other issue I've noticed is that occasionally I get phantom speed bursts. So speeds where I'll suddenly go up to like 90 kilometers an hour. And I know that I haven't ridden that fast. And it, it kind of ruins my speed graph for my ride, even though it's only a tiny thing. That's a bit frustrating. So that there have been a few disadvantages o overall because it has both connectivity options and the Garmin one doesn't I think that's only AMP plus then the Wahoo see it's a good reasonably priced option and I'm not sure where else to go but it's not perfect 
So that was the installation and a look at the speed sensor and cadence sensor, some of the pros and cons. If you have enjoyed this, then please hit subscribe to get my other videos in your feed. You'll also might wanna check out, I've got a review of some power meters and some head units and a bunch of other stuff. And I will link the relevant ones here and down below. So go check out those as well.